what's going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back yes we are we are back for a brand new season of love after lockup this is now look here before we even get into a we tv y'all not gonna keep doing this shit now look last season y'all said it was season two which was actually season three and y'all gonna try to continue on which this season is supposed to be actually season four episode one but y'all gonna put season two episode 40 really y'all for those of y'all who really with it, who woke, know that they ain't trying to manipulate us in our mind no kind of way. We know that this is season four, episode one, all right? Skeletons in the closet. But just to appease we TV, we gonna say it's season two, episode 40. Hmm. Before we get into the review, y'all, regular church announcements, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so just yet. Before you leave, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Hey, it is what it is. I understand. And then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, it wasn't a whole lot that went on on this first episode. I was expecting a whole lot more drunk. Oh, I'm drinking my Gatorade, y'all. This is my shit's little bamboozle. Lime, cucumber, Gatorade. It's my shit. But it wasn't a whole lot that went on on this episode. It was just basically a continuation from the last season, episode three. The last episode, whatever the hell. But anyways, nonetheless, hopefully you guys are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go and hang it right on up into it. Y'all, so we're going to start off with Brittany and Marcelino because they had the least going on out of everybody. <clears throat> They're at the OB's office because they are getting ultrasound, a 3D ultrasound pictures of their brand new baby that's on the way. Mind you, they got a 15-month-old baby girl, Zoila, as it is, but she is pregnant with another child. I forgot how many weeks she said she was. Six, I don't know. She a couple of months about this sucker. They could see already what the gender was, but they didn't want to know what it was. They want to have it, you know, a, a secret. Probably going to do a gender reveal. Whatever these millennials do now, damn days. But um, the baby's doing okay. They're doing good. She has full custody of her son now. She said that her um, ex-husband, Tito, he, or her ex, whatever, his visitations have been temporarily cut off. So, Lord knows what the hell that fool out there done went and damn did. But he ain't got no visitation rights right now. She got full custody of her son. Her and Marceli, uh, Marcelino doing good. And I, they my favorite couple out of all of them from all the season. They're my favorite couple because they're the ones that seem to have their shit together the most. I'm rooting for them. Hopefully... These two mofos make it strong. Don't nothing pop off later on, Marcelino. Or, you know, hey, Brittany, you know. But I'm just saying, y'all stick together. Y'all make it work. Because right now, they're doing so far so good. So, shout out to Brittany and Marcelino. Hopefully, the baby continues to grow. Hopefully, they have a boy. Because Marcelino know good and damn well he want him a goddamn boy. So, shout out to them. But uh, moving right along from them, y'all. So, next up, y'all, we have Andrea and Lamar. Now, Andrea is still in Utah with her kids, and Lamar is back in Cali. They have not seen each other since he got pissed and he moved when she tried to, like, you know, basically, like, trap his ass down there in Utah. They have not seen each other ever since then, and it's been about a year, right? Now, I don't know. I'm also, that, that, that just don't work for me. That's just me, though. None of my business. So she's going to a homegirl's house. They getting ready to have a sip and see to see her friend's new baby. People really do that shit? I mean, okay. But um, she's going to the sip and see to see her friend's new baby and, you know, to just catch up and to do some arts and crafts. You know, hey, some people drink wine. Some people smoke weed. Some people do arts and crafts to each his own. Now, she says she loves Lamar, and they are still married. They're not legally separated or nothing like that. He just done went and moved, and she's staying where the hell she at in her nice little Mormon world. But another reason that um, she has been holding on to their relationship is more than just her being in love with him, right? So, she's got this secret that she's been hiding from her friends, and that she... Y'all, this plane is distracting the hell out of me. It sound like a fucking Scud missile out there. Is this the World War? This ain't three, is it? I hope this, and please don't let this be dubbed three. 
So she's been keeping this secret from her homegirl them, right? And so they all sitting around the table and, you know, they asking her, like, what's going on with you and Lamar and y'all's relationship? How's it going? Now, she's telling them that she loves them. She wants everything to work out between the both of them. But another reason why she's been holding on so, you know, tight to Lamar and their relationship is because she went to see Lamar during a visitation when um, he was locked up, right? Now, she's telling them, you know, me and Lamar have been together for seven years. You know, my daughter is five, you know, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. So the homegirls are trying to do the math, like, wait, four, five, six, seven, care to eight, nine, ten, eleven, five, and then that's 20. Like, what is you talking about? So the one homegirl, Michelle, that's, that's, that's the... That's a little judgmental black home girl. You think she wouldn't be judgmental because she like, you know, you're a sister like me, you bitch, you ain't supposed to judge me, you know what I'm saying? But she don't want to judge her the most out of all of them. She's like, okay, so what the hell is going on? Because the one home girl is like, okay, wait a minute. Is this conjugal visits? Like, you know, what's going on? Are y'all trying, you trying to tell me that, you know, Lamar is Priscilla's you know, daddy, like, you know, like what's going on? So she's like, basically she paid for closet time when she went to go visit Lamar when he was locked up. So they paid for closet time during closet time. That's when her youngest daughter, Priscilla, was conceived. Now, her friend, Michelle, like I said, that's supposed to be the sister, like, right or not, like, you know what I'm saying? But she just like, you know what I'm saying? That's just disgusting to me. I would never stoop that low. If you're okay with your baby being conceived in a closet, like, that's so you. But it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm like, damn, bitch. But then again, you know what I'm saying? Her friends are like, so what are you going to do about y'all's marriage? Like, aside from the fact y'all was goosing in the closet and you didn't have baby girl, it is what it is. She here now. What are you going to do about your marriage? But you know what I'm saying? Andrew don't know what the hell she want to do. Because again, like I said, she ain't talking to Lamar. That's all. How you not going to, like, I, I'm not understanding that. Like, but then again, it ain't for me to understand. It can't be me to understand nothing like I can't not understand nothing like that. But you know what I'm saying? Hopefully they work their little old marriage out. We finna see what's finna happen with that. But based upon the previews, it don't like it's gonna get no better. Ooh, y'all. This is a hot ass mess here. So Megan, Michael, and Sarah, right? So they pick up where it left off the last time with him going and surprising Megan at her house. He riding in an Uber. He get a phone call from some other random chick. Now, at first, just based on the voice, it sound like it's Megan. But she say something about she had to put the kids to sleep. He hang up on the phone with her. Production like, is that Megan? He like, oh, no, nah, that was just some other chick that called at the wrong time. Nigga, what? He gets to Megan's house, and of course, she's surprised as hell. Like, nigga, what the hell is you doing here? So they casually, you know what I'm saying? He think he finna come up in the house and chill and talk. She's like, oh, no, we can't do all of that. Let's go ahead and sit out here in driveway and talk. He like, what? I can't go up in the house. Of course not, because her daddy is going to murk his ass if he come up in there and see that nigga sitting on the couch soaking up his good ass AC like it ain't nothing no sir we can't do that so they out there in the front driveway and they talking or whatever now he's still upset about how things ended between her and him the last time they had a little conversation right you know he was upset with her because she told him that she had kissed his homeboy right but then again at the same time you had a whole baby on her with your wife that she know nothing about but we ain't gonna say nothing about that he says regardless of the fact that he still loves her and that um he knows that she was there for him him for the two years that he was locked up so was your wife i'm just saying i'm petty mo shut up so he's basically saying that he kind of wants to give her and him another go he wants to rebuild up their trust and kind of see where things go um you know between them now she's so weak behind this dude as soon as he said that he done got a damn divorce she's like oh really you have the papers he's like no i ain't got them with me but you know it's in the process or whatever that's all he had to say and just like that he back in, in like, playing like he ain't even left in the first goddamn place or whatever. So, he sees that she's dressed up, getting ready to go out somewhere. So, he's like, you know, where are you finna go? So, she's like, I'm finna go meet my homeboy, B. That's her little bestie or whatever, right? So, she's like, well, you know, you want to come? So, she just invites this nigga to go to meet her and her homie, Be you know, B, to have some drinks or whatever. Mind you, B don't know that Mike done popped up. Because Megan didn't even know that Mike was finna pop up. But she don't even call B and give him no kind of heads up or nothing like that to let him know that, hey, 
Mike done popped up and he looking rough as hell like he just got out of prison. So A, please don't judge him. And B, you know, he here and he finna come have drinks with us. So, you know what I'm saying? She invites him to go out and have drinks with her and her homeboy B. So as soon as they get there, B is kind of thrown off because, you know, he gives <laughs> Megan a hug. B looking like, bitch, what the fuck is this, Micah? Ew, what's going on here? Hey, how's you doing? You know, does the wife know that you're here? I was like, yes, B, go in on his ass. And of course, Mike claims that he's going through a divorce and that, you know, he told Megan what the whole situation was between him and Sarah, which B is like, no, that's not a lie. You didn't tell her anything. She found out. After she found out is that's when you told her. So let's get it straight. Let's not try to sugarcoat or dance around and shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's just say what it is. B is basically being that best friend. Like, look here. What are your intentions? Because obviously my homegirl too damn dumb and digmatized to say what it really is. So since she don't want to say what it is, I'm going to say what it is. What the hell is your intentions? What the hell is you really got going on? You know what I'm saying? What is all of this? Mike just sitting up there looking dusty, busty rusty and disgusting and shit he's just basically saying like look here no disrespect to you i understand that you know you the bestie or whatever but i'm just trying to rebuild trust with her and trying to see what's going on with me and her now afterwards megan kind of starts breaking down and kind of starts defending this nigga and it's like yes basically that's what we trying to work on is just rebuilding trust and all that now megan poo poo boo boo honey boo boo child you damn near 30 this baby, like 23, 24, something like that. I understand this is the first piece of meat you done had, but baby, trust and believe. You can do t listen to your auntie. Listen to your auntie now. You can do better. I'm just saying. Bitch, see the signs. They all there. All up in your face. Meanwhile, all of this is going on. Sarah is back in New York with her and her babies. Her new baby that she got with... <laughs> baby still probably got the fresh umbilical cord on her damn belly button. And his other baby girl. Now, she says that Mike has not done a damn thing for her or those kids. She says the oldest baby girl steady tries to call him. He don't answer the phone. Just while she was there, cameras and all of that, she trying to call. The fool don't answer the phone the whole damn time. Now, I don't know if this was good editing or what, but uh, it, it, he was with Megan. He could have answered the phone then when he was had in, in the Uber riding and another bitch called. He could have answered the damn phone then or called his baby girl then. Girl, it was so sad. So... Sarah pretends to be Michael, and it's like, you know, you you want me to pretend to be daddy, and I can, you know, be on the phone and talk with you. Yeah, it was just, it was like touching me right here. She pretending to be Michael and talking on the phone with her daughter, and like saying everything that he would say to her, like, "Hey, pretty girl, I'm sorry I can't be there, pretty girl." Blah blah blah. She's like, "Well, I miss you. Am I gonna see you?" Like, it was so sad. Regardless of how I feel about Sarah, because regardless of what, I don't feel sorry for Sarah because. You know who you married? I'm just saying, like, the whole situation that she got going on with her daughter is like, I feel bad for her. Should no mother have to go through that? Then again, you shouldn't have had another baby by this. I'm just saying, though, it ain't nobody's fault. It ain't nobody's fault. But Mike needs to step up and he need to do what he need to do with goddamn kids. Now, why you ain't took this fool with no child support court? Nothing like that. But then again, I don't know, child. We gonna move on from them because that shit gonna run my blood pressure high. I'm not gonna do this to myself. Child, Lacey and Shane, girl. And John, girl. Lacey and Shane, y'all. Remember they got married, right? These fools is at the fertility doctor considering getting her tubes untied. Because Shane want her to have his baby. Mind you, Shane is 21, a convicted felon, fresh out of four years up out the pen, no job, no education, no nothing. She pays for everything. He says his full-time job is to be there for her. They in there talking to the doctor, right? Child, this shit is a hot-ass mess. He does not have a job, like I said, because he's a felon. But then again, you know, she's a cam model. So I follow her on Instagram. I think they cam model together. So I don't know if they do flicks and they selling flicks. 
for $13.99 on the internet, get your thrill or whatever it is that's going on. But, um, yeah, it's a hot mess with them. And they getting ready to move into a new house. And she already got three kids. But we have not yet determined how many baby daddies. That's not really none of our business, though, because them kids ain't got nothing to do with this. But what I'm saying is, she's got a lot going on. The doctor asked them, okay, so how actively are you all having sex now? This fool gonna say five to ten times a day. I mean, hey. I, I, I ain't got shit to say to that. So the doctor starts to talk to them about IVF and about freezing eggs and all this and the other. Child, this baby Shane starts to ask her, like, what are embryos? What do they do? How long is sperm good for? Just, uh, I was just like, oh, hell no. Nah. Lacey don't have no babies by this baby. But then again, it's that moment that she starts to realize, okay, wait a minute. This here is a, is, is a child because he's asking a bunch of young shit. Like, you should have realized that before you said I do to this fool, that this is finna have to be a whole nother baby that you finna have to raise, girl. So later on, they back at the house, right? <laughs> they packing up stuff, getting ready to move into their new home. It's the butt crack of dawn early in the morning. This fool done cracked open a beer and is already drinking. Lacey like, damn, nigga, you already drinking? It ain't even afternoon yet. Like, what the hell is going on? He like, look here, I'm just trying to get this with this drink. I'm trying to get this packed up. So we can go. We done paid the movers to do what they got to do. I'm straight. I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. Lace, Lace is getting frustrated with his ass because she like, look here. They are movers. They are not goddamn maids. Look at all this goddamn junk and shit that you got going on everywhere. You need to pick this shit up. He like, well, I could use a couple of hands. She like, well, I pay for everything. That's what I said. Oh, and oh, uh, that's when she starts to realize, okay. Well, now, when I was with John, he was a provider, and he was doing everything, and she probably didn't have to do nothing but sit back and be a, a, a booty model like she was doing on the internet, and he was providing and doing everything for her. Now that she's with Shane, the role is reversed. She has to do everything. She has to be the provider, and he got to sit back, and he got to provide the meat, and she don't like that. So she says that John ended up texting her the night before saying how much he missed her, how much he wanted her back, how he was depressed, and how he was having chest pain. Ever since then, she's been trying to call him, text him back, and she can't get in contact with him. Now she feels obligated to try to get in contact with him because she's afraid with him being a former drug addict that something's going to happen, and she don't want it to all be her fault. Really, she's trying to use that as an excuse so she can go back and she can talk with Shane because she had a set, I mean, talk with John because she had a second thoughts about being married to Shane in the first damn place now look here why now why now you should have thought about that a long goddamn time ago don't use that as an excuse as to why you finna go back and be with that dude but john called it john said we finna see how long this little relationship lasts between them because he said that lacy ho she can't go out here and just be she not finna do that so child she ends up calling her best friend miranda um the same one who tells it to her like a t.i motherfucking is homegirl is like look here girl Leave John ass alone. I, I don't care what he doing it for. He's he just trying to get you back. You ain't with his ass no more. You want to be with Shane. You married Shane. Leave the other boy alone. And you you going to take care of your, all your babies. Leave his ass alone. That would have been me too, girl. Look here, don't call me with that old dumb shit. I'm just saying, I'm your friend. I'm going to support you. But I'm going to tell you like it is too. Look here, go take care of all your kids. And leave that fool alone. Baby, <laughs> next up was my girl, Angela. Baby, Angela and Tony. Angela hopped in the firecracker. She chain smoking them goddamn Paul Malls. Ready to murk a nigga, take his whole goddamn head off his body. Come to find out, Tony been out there laying it low and spreading it wide. She say she went to bed last night and she noticed that he got up. He went and crept out and it got on his phone. So when he ended up falling asleep in the middle of the night, she went in there. She got his phone, tried to get in his phone, but the nigga had a passcode on it, right? So she said she took the SIM card out of his phone, put it in her phone. Boom, there it is. This fool at the hotel that he work at, he been up there calling prostitutes to the room, exchanging all of this to get him free rooms 
to do their little business. This fool ain't learned his lesson from last time. So, you know, baby Angela fired up. She ready to get in that ass. Where the fuck is Tony? Now, she said she played it cool. You know, she let him get up, go to, go to work in the morning. Gave him a kiss on his cheek, you know what I'm saying, baby? I see you later. Because she had to plot her next step. She said, I don't want to kill this fool just yet. I at least want him to go make his little eight hours worth of pay and then bring that shit home. Then I'm going to kill his ass on sight. He come in the house from work, girl. She's sitting there chain smoking in Paul Malls, right? He like, hey, baby, what's up? Where's my kid? She said, uh-uh, Tony. Sit down. We got to talk. He like, well, what's going on, baby? You know, hey, you know, tell me. What's good? What's going on? Baby, Angela turned to the daddy from taking on his ass. He wasn't ready for it. I went through your phone, Tony. I seen it. I seen it all, Tony. How can you do this to me? After everything I've done for you, I ought to fucking kill you. I was like, oh, shit. She finna kill his ass. That fool can do nothing but sit there looking stupid. He had the look of defeat all over his goddamn face. He couldn't do nothing but sit there, so put his goddamn hand in his face. She like, look here. You gonna have to get your head, get your coat, get shit, and leave. Kicks his ass out. Now, mind you, he's on parole. So, legally, he's supposed to be paroled out there to her house. She like, I don't give a damn. I'll call your parole people, whatever you gotta do. Because he's trying to tell her he ain't got nowhere to go, right? Baby. And say, like, look here. Yeah. I'll call one of your hoes for you, Tony. That bitch calls up a chick named Brandy. I don't know if this is little mama from last season that she got into it with over at the laundromat or what. But she was like, look here. This is Tony's old lady, ex-old lady. He ain't got nowhere to go, so he's on his way over to you right goddamn now. Homegirl was like, all right, cool. Tell him to come on over. She like, look here. Boom. You got somewhere to go. Get the hell on up out of here. Baby, after that, Angela snaps. She tells him to get your hat, get your coat, and leave, motherfucker. Starts throwing his stuff on up out the door. He like, look here. I'm going to take my stuff, and I'm going to leave it right here in the front, because I'm going to come back for it. She like, look here. By nightfall, if this shit is still out here, it's going on a bonfire. I don't give a damn what you got to do with it. Child, he ends up getting on the motorcycle that she bought and paid for. Now, if you're really done, you... Got them keys and told that nigga to hitchhike where the hell he got to go. But he got on that motorcycle and he left. So we gonna see what's gonna happen on the next episode. Um, She was out there early in the episode burning something. But she said that was all the letters and all of that stuff that he had bought her and all the letters that he had wrote to her. So we gonna see what's gonna happen on the next episode. But y'all, that was it for the first one. Like I said, it wasn't a whole lot that went on, but it was just enough to catch us up. So hopefully we gonna have some new shit popping on the next episode. So y'all already know, if it was anything that I missed... Drop down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm Timo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you. And I sure enough appreciate you.